hey everyone, uh, that with chapter 8, um, talks about, uh, Ark and temple. This is what it says. It says, uh, then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel on the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the house, yeah, the leaders of the fathers' houses of the people of Israel before King Solomon in Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Jerusalem today, which is Zion. And all the men of Israel assembled to King Solomon at the feast in the month of Ethanim, which, which is the seventh month, and, and, uh, and all the elders and all the elders of Israel came, and the, and the priests took up the Ark, and they brought the, and they brought up the Ark of the Lord the tent in me and all the holy vessels that were in the tent the priests and the Levites brought them up and King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who had assembled before him were, were with him before the ark the sacrifice of so many sheep and oxen that they could not be counted or numbered and the priests brought the ark of the covenant to the Lord to his place and the inner sanctuary of the house and in the most holy place underneath the wings of the cherubim the cherubim spread out their wings over the place of the ark, so the cherubim overshadowed the ark in its, in its poles. Kind of like what I said, well, it goes kind of like the angels are like guarding the throne of God, <laughs> which is actually what they do in, in heaven. Um, let's see real quick. It says, um, so when the cherubim spread out their wings over the place of the ark, so that the cherubim overshadowed the ark in its poles. And the poles were so long, the ends of the poles were seen from the holy place before the before the inner sanctuary, but they cannot be seen from outside, and they are and they are there to this day. So it seems like the, so, so it seems like the poles um, that were there in Solomon's temple um, could very well still be. Of course, Solomon's temple is not, not there no more. I mean, it got destroyed by the Babylonians, which is Iraq. Um, but of course, the second temple was built, but, but it was destroyed by Rome. But it seems like what it's saying here is that the poles could still be in Jerusalem somewhere. It's very possible. Um, let's see, it says, uh, There was nothing in the ark except two tablets of stone that Moses put there at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the people of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. And when the priests came out of the holy place, the cloud filled the house of the Lord, so the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. The glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Solomon blessed the Lord. And Solomon said, The Lord has said that he would dwell in thick darkness. I have indeed built you an exalted house, a place for you to dwell in forever. Then the king turned around and blessed all the assembly of Israel while all the assembly of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be, blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who of course is Jesus Christ, who, is, who with his hand has fulfilled what he promised with the mouth with his mouth to David, my, my, my father, saying, since, "Since the day that I brought my people out, not, since, the, since the day that I brought my people of Israel out of Egypt, I chose a city out of all the tribes of Israel, in which to build a house, that my name might be there. But I chose David to be over my people of Israel. Now it was in the now it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. The Lord said to David, my father." Whereas it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that, is, that it was in your heart. Nevertheless, you shall not build a house, but your son shall be born to you, shall build a house for my name. And now the Lord has fulfilled his promise that, that he made. For I have risen in the place of David my father and sat on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and I have built the house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, who is of course Jesus Christ, as we know. And that there I have prom and there I have provided a place for the ark in which is the covenant of the Lord that He made with our fathers when He brought them out of the land of Egypt. Solomon's prayer of dedication. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of the of all the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands towards heaven, and said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no god like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and showing steadfast love to your servants who walk before you with all their heart. Who have kept with you, uh, or yes, yeah, who have kept with you, with your servant David, my father, what you declared to him? You spoke with your mouth and, and with your hand have fulfilled it. To, have fulfilled it this day. Now therefore, O Lord God of Israel, keep your servant David, my father, what you have promised him, saying, You shall not like a man to sit before me on the throne of Israel, if only your sons pay close attention to their way to walk before me as you have walked before me. 
Now, therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, which you have spoken to your servant David, my father. But who will, but who will God indeed dwell on the earth? But yet, but will, says, but will God indeed dwell on the, on the earth? Behold, heaven is, says, behold, heaven in the highest heaven contain, cannot contain you. How much less this house that I have built? Yet have regard to the prayer of your servant and to his plea. O oh Lord my God, listening to the cry and to the prayer that your servant prays before you this day, that your eyes may be open at night, uh, or says, says that your eyes may be open night and day towards this house, the place in which you have said, My name shall be there. That you may listen to the prayer that your servant offers towards this place and listen to the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray towards this place and listen in heaven your dwelling place and when, and when you hear, forgive. If a man sins against his neighbor and is made to take an oath and comes and swears his oath before, you, before your altar in, in, in this house, and here in heaven and, at, and judge your service, condemning the guilty by bringing his conduct on his own head and vindicating the righteous by, reward, by, by rewarding him according to his righteousness. When your people Israel are defeated before the enemy because they have sinned against you, and if they turn again to you, acknowledge your name, and pray and plead with you in, in this house, then here in heaven... And forgive the sin of your people Israel, and bring them again to the land that you gave to their fathers. When heaven is shut up, and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, if they pray towards this place, acknowledge your name, and turn from their sin when you afflict them, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel, when you teach them the good way in which they should walk and grant rain upon your land which you have given to your people as an inheritance. If there is famine in the land, if there is pestilence, or blight, or mildew, or locust, or caterpillar, if their enemy besieges them in the land at their gates, whatever plague, whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer, whatever pleas made by, by man or by all your people of Israel, each knowing that the affliction of, of his own heart and stretching out his hands towards this house, then here in heaven, your dwelling place, Forgive him and act and render to each whose heart you know according to all his ways. For you, you only, know the hearts of all the children of mankind, that they may fear you all the days that they live in the land that you gave to, their, to, your, to our fathers. Likewise, when a foreigner who is not of your, own, of your people Israel comes from, for, comes from a far country for your name's sake, for they shall hear of your great name and your mighty hand and of your outstretched arm. When he comes and prays toward, <laughs> towards his house, Excuse me. <clears throat> Here in heaven, your dwelling place, and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you in order that all the people of the earth may know your name and fear you as you do your people, Israel, and that they may know that this house that I have built is called by your name. If your people go out to battle against their enemy by whatever way you shall send them, and they pray to the Lord towards the city that you have chosen and the house that I have built for your name, then hear in heaven their prayer and their plea and maintain their cause. If they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you are angry with them, and give them to, to an enemy, so that they are carried away captive in the land of the enemy far off or near. Of course, that happens later on against Babylon. Um, Israel, of course, sins against God, horribly sins against God. And God gets so fed up with them that he sends Babylon, which is Iraq today, sends them to, to attack Israel and carry them back to Iraq to be their slaves. So that happens. It's kind of like Solomon is, is kind of, you know, warning Israel about that, but of course Israel does it anyway, and God has them punished. So, um, let's see where I left off that real quick. Let's see, um, let's see, well, people have sinned against you in all their transgressions. It's not where I left off, let's see. So they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin. Okay, and you are and you are angry with them, and give them to an enemy, so that they are carried away captive to the land of the enemy far off or near. Yet if they turn their heart in the land to which they have been carried captive, and repent and plead with you in the land of their captors, saying, "We have sinned and have acted, per and have, er and, uh, acted perversely and, wicked and wickedly," they repent with all their mind and with all their heart in the land of their enemies who carry them captive and pray to you towards their land which you gave their fathers a city that you had chosen in the house they have built for your name 
and here in heaven your dwelling place their prayer and, and their plea and maintain their cause. Forgive your people who have sinned against you and all their transgressions that they have committed against you and grant them compassion in the sight of those who, who carried them captive. They may have compassion on them for they are for they are your people and your heritage which you brought out of Egypt in the midst of the iron furnace. Let your eyes be upon to the plea of your servant and to the plea of your people Israel, giving ear to them whenever they call to you. For you separated them from among all the people of the earth and to be your heritage, as you declared through Moses your servant, when you brought out your, when you brought out um, our fathers out of, out of Egypt, O Lord God. Solomon's ben, benediction. Now Solomon finished offering all this prayer and pleaded to the Lord. He arose from before, from before the altar of the Lord, where he had knelt with his hands outstretched towards heaven. And he stood and blessed all the assembly of Israel with a, loud, with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people, Israel, according to all that he promised. No one, not one word has failed, hold on, not one word has failed of all his good promises, which he spoke by Moses, his servant. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers, may he not leave us forsake us, that he may incline our hearts to him to walk in, in all his ways and to his commandments, his, his statutes, or his, and his rules, which he commanded our fathers. Let these words of mine, with, with which I have pleaded before the Lord, be near to the Lord our God day and night. And may he maintain the cause of his servant and the, call of, and the cause of his people Israel as, they, as each day requires. That all people of, that, that all people of earth may know that the Lord is God, and Jesus Christ is God, which we know, and there is no other but Him. Let your heart, let your heart therefore be holy, true to the Lord our God, walking in His statutes and keeping His commandments as at this day. Um, so of course today we still, hope, we still uh, follow His um, commandments. We still uh, live by His word. Um, of course, God knew that we couldn't. God, well, God knew that we, what, that we can't live a perfect life. God knew that we can't keep His commandments. You know, because if you break one, you broken them all. So God, out of His humbleness, God, out of, you know, out of His love, came as Jesus Christ, as a man. As a, God came as a man, as, as Jesus, who then lived a perfect life and, died, and then died across for our sins and then rose and, and then rose from the tomb to defeat Satan, sin, hell, and death, um, so that those that God's predestined to save the elect. Uh, we'll be saved, and um, yeah, that's pretty much the gospel, man. I mean, that's pretty much it. So, Saul, says, um, sorry, let's look up it. Solomon sacrifice. Then the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifice for the Lord. Solomon offered uh, as peace offerings to the Lord twenty twenty thousand oxen and one hundred twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the people of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. In the same day, the king consecrated in the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord, for there he offered. The burnt offering, the grain offering, the fat pieces, of the peace offerings, because the bronze altar that was for the Lord was too small to receive the burnt offering, and the grain offering, and the fat pieces, of the peace offerings. So Solomon held the feast at that time, and all Israel with him, a great assembly from Lebo Hamath to the brook of Egypt before the Lord our God seven days. So for about, so about a straight week they served and sacrificed to God, who is, of course, Jesus Christ. On the eighth day, he sent the people away, and they blessed the king and went to their homes, joyful and glad of heart for all the goodness that the Lord has shown to David, his servant, and to Israel, his people. It's chapter 8, um, about that. Chapter 8 talks, talks about, of course, the ark brought it to the temple, which, which uh, Solomon does that when, after, after the temple is built, and then brings the ark, ark of the covenant back into the temple. Then Solomon blesses the Lord, and then... Um, Solomon's benediction, and then Solomon starts doing sacrifices to, to God in, in the temple. Chapter 8, I'll be right back with chapter 9 here, here soon. Yep, be right back.